months. Wow, it's, it's been a while since I preached. But I believe it's God's sovereign time that I'm here for a reason. Because he put something special on my heart. Um, but I didn't realize, I was talking to Bree, this is actually the last woman's midweek of December. Because it's next men's midweek and then we go, there's Christmas break. And so, no pressure, no pressure for me. Woo. Anyways, but I'm super grateful just to share my heart. You know, obviously we're in December. It's the holiday times. It's the most stressful time of the year. <laughs> you know, um, and just taking the time to prepare. Um, super exciting just to share. Uh, it's been a while since I went back home to El Paso, Texas. And so this is, uh, you know, I got my plane tickets and Matt and I is gonna see my family. And uh, just super excited just to, to go. Um, yeah, I was actually born in San Francisco, but raised in Texas. So for me, that's like my town, like I'm, I'm Texan, I'm not from the Bay Area. Anyways, but with that being said, I was like, wow, this is super exciting. Gonna be with my family, gonna go back home. And then all of a sudden, the overflow of the heart came out. And I'm gonna share a little bit more in the lesson, but El Paso is a special place because it's the place where I actually ran away and uh, went to San Francisco, but you know, like it says in Acts 17, that was, that's where I was met up to, uh, where someone shared their faith. Actually, not someone, Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia shared her faith with me, um, and I became a disciple. But it was an overflow of the heart because I was like, wow, I'm feeling nervous. I want to prepare in going back home and give my heart and, you know, just really really persevere with my family. I love my family so much, but today I'm just going to be sharing and how I'm preparing for the winter break. I know it's super exciting. It's Christmas, spend time with family, the holidays, but let's be real. It, it's a time where we kind of chillax a bit. Now rest in it, it's not sinful. It's not bad, but when we don't have that much structure and order than we usually do, you know how it is. Sometimes we can get a little bit lazy and loosen the conviction. And so today I'm just going to share and how I'm preparing for the winter. And for you ladies, I think um, for more of the, the seasoned disciples, I know that this is not your first holiday as a disciple. And so maybe some of the scriptures you're going to hear before. And so really just take the time to meditate on it and really reflect, have I been doing this? And if not, why? And for those who've been baptized this year, this is going to be your first holiday as a disciple. And it's super, super exciting where you get to really just share about your conversion and your testimony to your family. But with this lesson for the new disciples this year, just I just ask to, you know, just take heed to the scriptures today uh, so that you can be prepared for the winter break. So with that being said, my short and sweet uh, lesson today, it, it's a really long title. It's called The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, dot, 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 only if you rely on God and his people. So <laughs> my first point, rely on God. So let's turn uh, to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5, when you get there, please say amen. So 1 Peter chapter 5. Okay, okay. Chapter 5, we are going to start in verse 8. But a scripture we're all familiar with. And it says, be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Such a great scripture. It's, it's a very sobering scripture and it helps us be sober and alert in the times of the season in the winter. You know, here Peter, um, the book of Peter has to deal with hope 
But he's not trying to give the disciples hope. He's also preparing them for something great, but also for hardships and trials. But right here, it's a very clear teaching. He's giving us a little bit of insight of the spiritual world and honestly, the way how Satan hunts. And he hunts like a lion who preys on his victims. And I don't know about you, but my husband really loves lions, so he's always talking about facts and whatnot. But what what lions do, they, they like rush a, a, a group like a, a herd of animals and then they kind of nitpick and figure out and attack and fight to isolate either the injured the weak or the young and so with that being said this is how satan is spiritually we can create all these winter wonderland plans and satan has a plan too the uh he has perfectly thought out a plan and how to get you to die spiritually i like to call it the the winter bummer plan that yeah that my husband said don't use that joke no one's gonna laugh so i did it anyways <laughs> thank you i only got one but no, on a serious note, in order to be prepared to uh, come back the, the devil's schemes, we need to consider who Satan is and how he's going to take us out. we got to know our enemy, right? So let's turn to Luke 4, and we're going to understand of ways how we can be tempted and taken out this winter break. Um, so let's go to Luke 4. We are about to read a great story about Jesus, and... Growing up, I was really skeptical of the Bible. Long story short, uh, I come from a Muslim background and a Catholic background, so I was very skeptical about Jesus. Um, and there's an incredible, those, if this is your first time here, whoever invited you, asked them to do the Jesus study, changed my heart. Because it's all about how Jesus is the great high priest who empathized with our weaknesses. And I had no idea that we can worship a God who understands the, understands the ins and the outs of our hearts. And this story here, to see him struggle, really just softened my heart, but also made me feel like, wow, like God can really relate to us in all ways. But we're going to start here in Luke 4, in chapter 1. It says the title here, Jesus is Tested in the Wilderness. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Crazy. This is, he just got baptized, led to the desert, tempted for 40 days. It said every day. And we're only going to see three accounts of those temptations. I can forget about that. I thought it was only three times. No, every day he got tempted. But we're only going to see three of them right now. So in verse 3, it says, the devil, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. So the first temptation that we can possibly be taken out is that he's going to uh, make you doubt in your identity. Just right here, he says, he's like, where is it? Oh, if you are the, the son of God, do this. And a lot of us, man, I, I recommend, you know, if you guys are not reading the book, there's a great book called Captivating. I don't know if you guys read that book. Write it down. And it, it, it just goes such in a, a, a deep search of why does women question our, our, our identity and why we get so insecure. But this is one of the ways how Satan takes out the women. And I realized, I was like, man, there's certain questions that I've been tempted with. You know, like, if you're a disciple, then why haven't you been fruitful, right? If you're truly God's daughter, why don't you always feel joyful or confident? That one always got me there. Or the third one is, is if you're a true Christian, why has God hasn't answered your prayers? And there's many questions that he can put in your head. And I know for right now that the winter break hasn't even started yet, but I know in this room some of your ladies are probably thinking that now. And you got to see this is Satan's plans to take you, uh, make sure that you don't rely on God, and he's going to try to make you find your identity in the world. But... 
But the hope is, ladies, you are capable in becoming joyful and confident women. Your worth is not measured by the world's fleeting ad admiration, but by the internal value bestowed upon you from our creator. And I, I, I just, guys, when you, go, when you get into your quiet time and you see something and he tells you who you are, Something that was told to me, before I walk out the door, I need to choose to make a decision to believe it. If I don't believe it, I ain't walking out the door yet. Amen if you're rushing for work. But you get the, the heart behind that. Make a decision to believe that. Make a decision to believe what God tells you who you are. And that's how you're going to beat it. We're going to look at the second temptation in Luke 4. and verse 5, it says... The devil led him up to the high place and showed him in an instant um, all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the, the, their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I, um, I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. In this temptation, he tried to tempt him in an instant gratification. If you know about Jesus, he came to seek and save the lost. And he wanted all nations to be disciples, right? And so this is the beginning of his ministry, right? His ministry was about three years. But right here, he made it, Satan made it look like kind of dangling in front of him. He's like, hey, you don't have to go through those three years of hardships. You don't have to go through the cross. You don't have to do any of those things. It's right in front of you. Just take it. So tempting. But right here, Jesus made a decision to rely on God. And this is so true. We live in a, in a microwave generation where we want things now. And this is one of the main things for you got you to gotta understand and, and be sober about yourself. What is something that I desire that I want now and that I'm being impatient about and learning how to surrender that to God? You know, I know for those who are, are, are single, sometimes we want the, the validation or we want attention. And so maybe some of you guys are going to be tempted to hit up that one guy in the past just to make sure to, is he thinking about me? It happens. As a young Christian, as a young Christian, way before I dated anything, I did it myself because I felt insecure. I felt lonely. I was like, let me just hit up that one guy or let me dress a certain way so when I walk down the street, I can get some looks. This happens. Instant gratification. For the students, sometimes I know right now final exams, they're crazy. I've been through it. But you can do it. But sometimes I would compromise in my convictions and missing the, uh, the meetings of the body. Or I would stay in my dorm all day. Uh, not my dorm. I didn't live in dorms. I live in a sister's household. Um, a sister's household studying all day. Right? But at what cost? Yes, like I got a good grade. But in the end of the week, I was burnt out and I was burnt out like spiritually because I missed the meetings of the body or didn't have my quiet time because all, all night I've been studying right or lastly I know something that I've done before I was like man I'm tempted because I, 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 I'm in, in debt you know what maybe maybe I'll get that one job I, it's okay if I miss Sunday or it's okay if I miss women's midweek or or Devo to get out of debt now Hear me out, it's, I mean, this is important to, to get out of debt or get the good grades, but at what cost, ladies? At what cost? You gotta trust in God's timing, right? And so Satan, again, will put these things before you, impurity, immorality, idolatry, but what you're really looking for is emotional intimacy, validation, security, acceptance, and for us ladies, it's, it's love, right? But you can get this from God. You know, as cliche as it sounds, I had to stay away from those Hallmark ch uh, channels with all those uh, <laughs> movies about the couples, even, even though I knew they were so unrealistic, but I would daydream. I said, one day... <laughs> I mean, heck, if that makes you struggle, don't watch it. Stop watching it. You know, but in the moments where I feel a, a lack of love or I don't feel seen, and even as a married woman, sometimes I, amen, 
I love Matt, but Matt is fickle too. And sometimes I don't always feel loved. And that's okay because I need to get that from God. And so the three promises that I carry very close to my heart is one, God will never forsake me nor reject me, like it says in Hebrews 13, 5. Two, God will always be faithful to me, Deuteronomy 7, uh, verse 9. And three, God will show his unfailing love even through the midst of afflictions, Lamentations 3, verse 32. Ladies, I know each one of you deals with the same thing, and I really encourage you, find the three promises that God wants to give you. He will never break it. Memorize it. Keep it close to you during the winter break. And lastly, we're going to look in Luke 4, verse 9. Verse 9, it says, The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the, the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an uh, opportune time. So this last one right here, Satan tries to make Jesus in questions God's deliverance. He's like, God, God said, you know, I have the plans to, to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. But why are you going through all of this? Why are you struggling? When is God going to deliver me? And we can't, we can't test God in this way, ladies. Especially, I know, I'm going to talk more a little bit later in the, the lesson, but I know in the midst of, of hardships or trials, we can question, will God deliver me in this moment? But ladies, you guys are godly women. You will thrive not because life is free from challenges, but because your faith will transform challenges into opportunities for miracles. Because it's still the year of miracles. So I encourage you, walk with the assurance that you are the daughters of God who has conquered the world. And so with this, you know, if you're humble, you can learn from anybody. From anybody, including babies. And babies teach me a lot about relying on God. If you don't have kids, I encourage you, go ask one of the mamas and take care of their kids, okay? But, you know, no, but I really enjoy being around babies. You know, I, I think about Niobe, Tanya's daughter, the little baby. She's right there. Where is she? We're a little, little baby right there. Uh, I think about Chloe, <laughs> little baby Chloe. She's always smiling. Uh, I love her. I think about baby Jordan. I mean, there's so many. I think, you know, he's not a baby, but I think of Monty. You know, he's still in his little, little baby <laughs> stage. <laughs> but I love it. Every time I'm around the kids and... Obviously, when they get hurt or they're feeling down or irritated, who do they run to? Yeah, mama, sometimes daddy, you know, but they run to their parents. And it just teaches me a lot to have a childlike heart during the winter. That God actually sees you as a little bebe. You know, something that I do, I think Erica does it. She has a, you have a baby picture on your phone of you. Yeah. She has a baby picture of herself on her phone, and I did that as well, just to remind myself, like, that's me. That's how God sees me. I'm still the little baby in his eyes, and he wants me to run to him, right? And so this is something we got to do. We got to rely on God during the winter. And so the practical here, whatever these temptations, whatever stood out to you, guys, create an incredible plan for your quiet times, anything that you're dealing with. And I think, too, we don't have all the time to talk about this. And so I, I really encourage you guys, study out prayer. I don't think we have a deep conviction on prayer. And it sense like how powerful it is. Like, man, for the whole month, study out from uh, the Old to the New Testament of just what prayer is and why do we pray and why God calls us to pray. It's going to help so much. And once you have that deep conviction, go create a plan. I know uh, I heard it through the grapevine. Um, Imani actually uh, every morning creates a plan on what she's going to pray about. 
And so that's something that she looks forward to. And I was like, I love that because sometimes when I wake up, I, I'm always like thinking like, what, what do I pray about? But having some structure and order in our prayer lives is so important. But ladies, please, please, please study out prayer and gain a deep conviction on prayer. With that being said, there's one more thing that we need to create to create a, a master plan for the winter break. I know it's so funny, over the, the Thanksgiving break, um, every time I'm like cooking or I'm cleaning, I liked in the background to put uh, Disney movies. I don't know if anybody likes Pixar movies or anything like that. Wow, y'all need to watch some Disney movies. <laughs> I'm grateful I brought this up because naturally I, I, I don't have the, the, I don't know, I don't know how to phrase this in the best of way, but I don't have the softest heart. It's not like, I'm not instant crying all the time. And um, sometimes when I, I put these, uh, these latest Disney movies, um, thinking that it's just going to be background noises, I end up glued to the seat crying, <laughs> burning the chicken or the rice or not getting something done. And it's so funny because, oh my goodness, I mean, I can't, there's just some, I have some pictures here, like there's some, uh, Soul, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Soul, Picanto, oh, uh, Up, talks about grief, oh, Elemental is really good, Frozen, Coco, Inside Out, that's my favorite, Inside Out. And I was like, why? They, they just know their audience, it ain't the kids. It's the parents, it's the adults. Because the cliche as it sounds, they're talking to the, the inner child, the broken inner child in us. And that's why I end up crying because it's like, it just softens my heart. But when I was looking through these Disney movies, I realized that there was always like this one hard-hearted character that always gets paired up with this very like soft-hearted character. And they end up just working together to like accomplish something or face something. And it, it, trust me guys, look it up. It's always like that one hard-hearted, soft-hearted, and then like they face and then they conquer their fears. And I realized I was like, wow, like, even, even Disney movies got it. Like, what's so important and what's going to keep us faithful during the winter break is relationships. We need to rely on one another. So funny. There was this one time I was talking to the sister. I was like, sis, uh, I'm starting to give, like, recommend Pixar movies as, like, a prescription drug. I'm like, you're, you're dealing with, vulnerab okay, vulnerability. You know, study out Inside Out. Focus on the character Joy and how she, like, works with uh, the character Sad and how they came together and Sad just won everything. So get back to me when you watch that movie. I'm serious. Get back to me, guys. I'm just kidding. But anyways, I digress, I digress. But my second point, relying on God's people is so important. Um, turn with me to Judges 18. Judges 18. It's a, I know, it's very, it's really, really good passage. Um, so, Long story short, judge, in the book of Judges, it was a very confusing time. There wasn't uh, the best leadership, and so sadly the Israelites were just a roller coasters of hardships. Um, but in the book of Judges, we're going to read about one of God's tribe, the, I hope I say this right, um, Danonites, Danonites, um, but they were promised a certain part of, of the land to rest, but we're going to see what they do here, um, because as they were looking, they were trying to find a perfect place to, to conquer, but until they stumble across this other clan, it's not, they were um, pagan worshipers, but it was another clan called the Laish clan. And we're going to see what they do to the Laish clan here. So Judges 18, we're going to read in verse 6. It says, the priest answered them, go in peace. Your journey has, uh, the, the, your journey has the Lord's approval. So the five men left and came to Laish, where they saw that the people were living in safety, like the Sidonians. At uh, at peace and secure. As since their land lacked nothing, they were prosperous. Also, they lived, in a uh, lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relationship with anyone else. So again, 
The Danites were looking for the piece of land that God promised them uh, for them to have, for them to settle and rest in. But one of the things they had to do was conquer another clan. And so they're looking for, so to say, the easiest clan to conquer. And it was the Laish. Now, the Laish here, later on in the chapter, they get conquered, but for three reasons. And the three reasons it says here is that, one, they were isolated. They were far from other clans. Two, it says that they had no relationships with any of the other tribes. And three, it says that they were at peace. Now, the KJV says they're, uh, it's not like a peace of mind. The word here, peace, translates to careless. They were careless. They assumed that they were secure and prosperous, and they relied their own understanding and strength. And that's what made them an open target to be conquered later on in the chapter. But uh, learning from this story in a spiritual sense, this can't be us. We can't be the Laish here. Now, what's crazy, the word Laish means strong lion. And so something that I realized, I was like, when I was looking up some facts about lions, um, lions are, they're not, they're not uh, solo, especially the lioness. They're, they're nothing without their pride or their correlation for the, the lions. They're always in a pack. That's the only way they hunt. And so when a lion is alone, that lion too can get taken out. And so this lion here got taken out because of their careless ways. And I, I really do want to sit on this for a little bit when it comes to relationships. I think this is time, I think, just uh, to share something that I'm going after for next year is just having deeper uh, friendships, deeper relationships uh, with everyone. It's something that, it, personally, it's not my greatest strength. And it has to do with just a lot of, of my past, being hurt from people, not, not willing to, to trust in other people. Um, I always believe that people were shallow and what they said, they'll, they'll never come through. And it had to also do a lot with just my relationship with my dad as well and so when it came to as being a disciple it took me a while guys I mean I've been a disciple now almost seven years but it took me a bit a while to have a deep convictions and, and relationships in the kingdom you know just a reminder write this down this was God's second greatest commandment in John 15 verse 12 it says there is no greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend you know, there's so many scriptures about relationships. In Proverbs 27, verse 6, it says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. You know, we always got to have that one friend who's always straight up and honest. For me, that, that, that's Brie in my life. She don't care if I get hurt. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. <laughs> or Proverbs 27, verse 9, it says, Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. For me, that's, that's Regine, you know. She's always so wise and gives me advice. I'm so grateful for that. Or a very uh, convicting scripture, and oh, I didn't write the Proverbs. Just, I'll, I'll send out the Proverbs. But it's another proverb that says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother, or shall I say sister, is born for a time of adverse, um, adversity. And so for this scripture, this, this one hits close to home. Because about three years ago, it was a time where I was like raising up, becoming a leader, I was engaged with Matt, and a lot of like even greater things were happening in my life. But there was a time where um, I got pulled into a D group and I was excited to learn. And it was with uh, Jason and Sarah. We were in this D group. And then there was like other disciples there. And they, uh, Jason shows the scripture to me. And he's like, so sis, I want to talk about something. I was like, why me? Like, this is a whole D group. <laughs> what about him? <laughs> what about Matt? Um, and uh, he showed me the scripture, and uh, he was just sharing how during the time there was a lot going on in Sarah's and Jason's life, and uh, at the time it was like also their, their nanny, I was just around them all the time, but he shared this, and Jason shared vulnerably that he felt hurt by me. He felt hurt that I wasn't family, that I wasn't his sister at the time where they were going through a lot, and it, it was just... 
it really sobered me up. And I didn't really think about that. Like, what? That family? And it is true. My actions didn't show that. Like, sometimes I can have this, like, idea that my leaders have it all together. They're doing great. They're fine. They're spiritual. But I, I would never go out of my way and ask, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Do you need anything? Right? And I didn't realize that my actions were very hurtful and that I wasn't family. And with that, man, after that, Sarah can tell you, I was like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. But I was embarrassed because it hurt my pride, too, you know, and amen. But I, after that, I said, not again. I never ever want anybody to feel that way around me. I never want them to not feel like family around me. And I do want to take this time as uh, leading the, the West region, um, and as well with, with Southland, if, guys, if there's anything that I've ever done, if you don't feel like I'm, I'm family with you, please, please, please take the time to come up to me, get open, share your heart. I'm so willing to hear you and do my best to be the best sister, the, the best friend, the best leader that I can be for you and make you feel like family. So please, please, if you really do love me, please get open if you feel that way. But also, too, I think something... I had to be taught to, to be family. I know a lot of us came from broken past. And I didn't, I had no idea how to be family. If you don't know how to do that, ask. Just, just let me know. How do I be family to that sister, to that brother in general, right? And I think just to, to, to share, something that I, I realized going back to, um, to El Paso, I'm definitely feeling a lot. There was a lot of uh, hardships. There was a lot of, I think, really traumatic moments. I think within my family, there was death within the family. And so going back there, a lot of uh, memories and, and feelings are flooding back. And this is why I'm like preparing my heart and, and setting my mind right to go in there to, to not numb out. Because that's something that I do. And I really want to address right now in this room, I, I know a lot of you are going through something, either something from the past or even right now. I know it's something that we don't talk about a lot, but I know a lot of you probably have very dramatic pasts, and it comes into the kingdom, and that's okay. I really want to let you know, guys, that, you know, the kingdom here, it, it, for me, it's a safety net. It helped me heal. But the way that I healed was not just relying on God, but through the people in my life. You know, like I mentioned earlier in the lesson, Lamentations 3, it says that he will show uh, uh, compassion and his unfailing love through the affliction. But how does he show that? Through the women in my life, through the women in your life, the men, the family. We need each other. And I know, I know a lot of you are so tempted and probably already in it, choosing to numb out. And I know there's even some that chose not to come here tonight. But those who did come here, I want to let you know, I know sometimes we can feel faithless. I can't change. Or faithless, I can't overcome that traumatic moment in my life. But I want to let you know, the reason why you're here is because you still have hope. You may not feel that way, but you decided to show up here because you still have hope. You're still faithful, right? And I just want to just spur you on as a sister and encourage you and, and just don't, don't choose to numb out. Don't run away. We need to, we need each other to, to face these things. We need courage. And one of my favorite uh, quotes, it says that the courage to be vulnerable is not about winning or losing. It's about the courage to show up when you can't predict or control the outcome. And that's when we do. I know there's moments where we don't feel like coming to the meetings of the body. I, I, I feel it sometimes. I'm the same way. Because there's, there's certain things that can, uh, quote, unquote, trigger or, or bring us from the past. But ladies, something that I have to ask myself, do I want to live like this for the rest of my life? 
Do I want to be a fearful woman the rest of my life? Do I want to be a prisoner of my anxiety and my insecurities? That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to tell you that you can't change and that you're going to live and feel like this for the rest of your life. But ladies, listen to God. Rely on each other. Get open. If there's anything in your life that's, that's just the overflow of your heart, guys, just please get open. You know, and, and also I do want to mention, maybe that other person may not fully understand. But something that I learned about trauma or about grief is that even the secular world, they talk about this. If you read books, it says that you can't do it on your, by yourself. You need someone to carry that trauma for you or that, that grief with you along in these times. Don't isolate yourself. Ladies, if you isolate yourself, you're going to be taken out. And so I say that because I've, I've been through it myself, and it, it just comes from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys. We're family. Please let me know if, if, if you have any questions or any concerns. Just, just come up to me. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. But I think some great examples of women that are just courageous. I think one of them, Alicia. Alicia Polik, where is she? She's over there. She's amazing. I know, I know you're feeling it, sis. She has these long commutes. She lives in OC. And so she, she, but she's here every woman's midweek. She's incredible. But she shared her communion not too long ago. And it was incredible of just how much she faced. Guys, like, that, that's another woman that you can come up to and ask for wisdom. I think for another one who's very courageous in my eyes is Haley. Where's she at? Hey. Haley. You're in a courageous woman. You face your fears all the time. I know it's it, it taken a lot to allow me in your life, to allow others in your life. I know it's been a lot, but this woman, she's persevered. She's fought. She's been through so much these past couple of years, especially when it comes to the topic of relationships. But man, for you to still be here, you love God. And she fights every time to rely on others. As fearful I know it could be, but remember being courageous is not an absence of fear, but this woman is a courageous woman. But what made her so courageous in my eyes is that even the moments when I've hurt her in the past, in the midst of her being fearful, she's just chosen to get open to me. And she gave me the opportunity opportunity to listen, to take ownership, and to apologize and to ask for forgiveness. And there are other times where maybe there was something I said or something that I've done that made her feel that she couldn't trust me. But when she got open about that, it gave me an opportunity to reassure her heart. Or other times where she just simply got open and maybe feeling overwhelmed, but it gave me the opportunity as a sister to spur her on or give her direction. And it pushed me to be a better sister, to be a better leader, but most importantly, to be a better friend to her. And for Haley, I know each time she faced these, these little, little battles in getting open, with time, it's built her faith, it's built her hope in relationships, and I really do believe God is totally blessing that because she's going to be married next week. I just want to say, I love you so much, sis. Thank you so much. But... With that being said, ladies, we need to rely on each other this winter. And so I challenge you guys, find your winter buddy. Like it says in Amos 3, 3 it says, uh, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? And so go, pick that one person. I'm not saying go be best friends with everybody, okay? But pick that, I mean, you can. Go for it. Go for it, sis. Um, but pick that one sister, Pick that one sister and say this, I want you to walk with me during the winter break and keep each other accounted for, for quiet times, challenge each other to, to share your faith. I think a lot of us are going back with the family. It can be a lot with family. Guys, get open, you know, have a little hotline with some of the sisters. Something that I do, I have a, a group chat with some of the, the girls and we just constantly getting open in the group chat, helping each other out. But push each other, rely on each other during this Christmas break, please. 
but also to push yourself to share your faith. For other people, this is usually the lo uh, loneliest times and the darkest times for others, right? Those who are your first time uh, attending and hearing this message, I want to push you guys, like, just go and, and study the Bible with those who invited you. This is the great opportunity to seek after God. It, it's the break. You have all the time. Study the Bible and understand what it means to rely on God and God's people. As with that being said, ladies, let's just prepare for this winter break. You know, it, it can be and it will be the most wonderful time of this year as long as we rely on God and God's people. I love you guys.